appointment. So I'm looking at those kind of patients and, and not even talking to them on a, on a daily basis because I'm reviewing everybody. But, um, for example, a patient, um, this we talked to this young man yesterday, um, 61-year-old African-American male um, who is disabled and on Medicare, um, has a high school education, um, says his household income was less than $15,000 a year, um, recently um, has issues uh, with um, HIV nephropathy, and so Yetin was elevated and we had made some changes um, in his medications back several months ago and he was just having a real hard time um, understanding um, some of the changes that were being made as far as taking some every other day and some every other day and he was confused yesterday when I was talking to him so I um, I talked to him about this program and about, um, you know, what it was for and why um, I thought that he could benefit from it. Um, and he just kind of said that he, he thought he understood now and he just really wasn't interested in participating in, in anything like this. He did not want to change drugstores. Um, he does not live in town. He lives out of town. Um, and I was telling him, I said, you know, we can mail your medicines to you at your home. You don't have to have to come here to pick them up. But he wasn't interested in that. Um, so he, he, he declined to participate. And, and Terry, um, when you're looking at those clients, um, and I know that initially you had said that you were you were focused on their um, viral load. Is is that the first thing that you look at? That's the very first thing I look at. If they have been, if they, if I go back and I'm and I run and I just quickly scan the last three years of viral loads because I can easily see what it's been for the last three years. And if they've been consistently, un if they've not been anything other than undetectable, I just pass right on over them. Now, maybe I shouldn't be, but I just figure if, they, if they've maintained an undetectable viral load for the last three years, they're taking their medicine. Now, I do let, I do, we do consider, um, though, I, I say that in, in sort of, I should. I, I guess that is the first thing I look at. But I know my patients. I, I don't have other words to say it except I know who people are in my clinic. And so, if I know that somebody has got um, a lot, in other words, I, we. I called the lady the other day. I was. To, I'm trying to get a hold of her now. She's recently been diagnosed with cancer. She's always done real well with taking her medicines and keeping her appointments, but now she's got cancer, and so that's added another another stressor to her. And I was going to talk to her about maybe um, participating. I thought this might be be good, you know, be good for her. Um, but as a general rule, we've got so many patients that that have. Hot, you know, that, that have unsuppressed viral loads and, and aren't keeping appointments and all of that, that I try to just focus on that group of folks. Okay. Does our project team have any um, comments or questions? Or does anybody else? So when these patients like you said, I realize you do know the patient, but if a patient is struggling with another aspect of one of their other conditions, is is that something you think about, or do you not yeah. really? Oh yeah. Okay. If they're struggling, if they're struggling with their diabetes, or they're struggling with their hypertension, or they're struggling with something like that, yes, we certainly consider them. And that's even if they have a suppressed viral load. 
Even if they have a suppressed viral load, we'll look at it, yes. Okay. Terrific. Any just other because, questions? Just because depending on the situation, like this lady who's, had, who's, got, who's got a new diagnosis of cancer, I'm afraid if we don't step in and help her, she may soon not have a suppressed viral load. Sure. No, it's always yeah. good to be proactive, yeah. Absolutely, and that that is an excellent point as we look at the inclusion criteria, which I have projected on the screens, and, and those of you who don't have access um, to the screen today, it's on page 13 of your protocols. Um, any patient that um, has two or more chronic medical conditions um, are eligible for enrollment, um, or we are um, changing um, any kind of a chronic disease uh, medication as well, or initiating a new medication. Terrific. Right. Any and other so questions? It's, okay. Well, I was just going to, can I step in? So please. Right. And I just think that that is the goal. That's the ideal patient is that we want those that are struggling with a variety of their conditions. But what we're really looking for now is to try to get a push to get people enrolled. and. You know, if it, if it becomes referring people in who might just need a little tweaking here and there and don't have major issues, uh, then that may be what we have to start looking at in order to get the numbers that we need to get. Are we, are we willing, are, are you saying we're willing to just sort of take more bodies now? Well, if they're qualified for the project. Not exactly, but <laughs> if you could, yeah, they, okay. They, they do, as long as they meet the inclusion criteria, you know, yeah. I think we're going to, that that's what we have to look at. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you know, the thing is, I mean, I've got a patient right now that I'm thinking of that, that's got HIV, diabetes, um, hyperlipidemia, he's had a coronary, um, we just changed his, we've just changed his medicine for his, um, he would just change to um, lipid medication. Right. Uh, and we've been tweaking his diabetes medication now. Right. Now, and even HIV in is well controlled, has always been well controlled. He never misses sure. his appointment. So right. I never really considered him for this, but yet he, by standard, he, he does meet the criteria. Absolutely. Even if you weren't tweaking any of his medicines by being by having those chronic conditions and taking multiple medications for any for all conditions, he would qualify to be referred in. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't all have to be trained, Rex. Right. But they have to have one from the top group and one one from the group within the past year and one from the group group that current currently meets or one from either of those groups. One of the following from either category. Okay, not from both. All right. From either That's category. That's what I thought, but I wanted to be sure. Okay, all right. Terrific. Thank you, Terry. All right. Thank you. Um, Care Resource, would you like to, to present? Absolutely. Sure. Lewis is going to present. Hi, uh, guys. Uh, Every morning, like, I, um, oh, I get on the, our our software, which is uh, all the doctors, Entrogy that they use, and all the appointments for that day, I pull them up. And the criteria for me basically is, if the insurance accepted, it's, um, I look at everybody, uh, and of course if they're HIV positive, because we do treat everybody. Um, so I'm not, I haven't really been excluding people that just have one condition, so I've been recruiting everybody. But uh, this past week we had a client that um, came in, I identified her as a potential uh, beneficiary in the morning, I approached her, um, her insurance was uh, accepted by Walgreens because we, we can pull that information up. Um, and she was very interested in the program, but then she stated that due to the fact that she worked at Publix, which is a local supermarket chain, she was required to take her medications from the Publix pharmacy. So I thought that was illegal. <laughs> I just suggested she should call the insurance board of, of Florida and. and See if that's correct or not. I don't think that's legal. You guys understand? Yeah, I, yeah. this is Ambrose. I think that actually that that, as long as it's not restricted by disease state, that they might be able to get away with something like that. Oh, really? Yeah, it is Florida. You're right. 
So I think the thing I think the thing is it's not telling people you can't use that pharmacy. It's just telling people we're not going to pay for it if you do. But um, I'm sorry. Would would I, I don't know this question, but would a place like Publix have such exclusive? Um, um, insurance that it would, they would only utilize their pharmacy? No. Yeah, the only no I think it's, so I think I it's more know. of what was just mentioned, that it's probably they can go pick up their medications from anywhere, but Publix will only pay for them because they're using the public specific health insurance. Ah. So that's, that's a different thing. So that, was, that, would be a, that would be an example of a patient who couldn't participate in the project because they could not pick up their medications from Walgreens, just they would be able to normally pick them up, but they just precluded by their um, provider uh, by their health insurance. Well, they were bullied into using the, the Publix. No, well, the, the problem required. is with this client is that she actually works at Publix, so the, the company right. she works for sure. is making her choose Publix, and that's why we told okay. her to call her insurance. Do, right. do, you have, do you have another um, client that does we not have, have an, insurance, an insurance yeah. issue? Uh, yes, uh, we have another case where also the client uh, has. Not have oh, they doesn't have insurance issues? That's the only issue we have. That's the only issue. And within that, there's several other issues well, for one insurance that has different plans that we can't, we don't have contracts with. Or if they're below 400% poverty line and then they have their medicines through uh, the health yeah, department. Yeah, the, the, the major issue that we're having is our, it's the health insurance. Nobody, issue. everybody else is, there's no problem here for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's go to um, uh, Truman. Is Truman on? Hi, this is Rose. Hi, Hi Rose. Rose. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, good. Well, <clears throat> you know, so for this past week, unfortunately, the answer is the answer I can't give you. Um, that is the most common. I can tell you that we've worked hard for patients who say they don't have time to work with Walgreens to get them scheduled around their clinic visits, and that's been uh, very helpful. Um, our pre-screening of charts um, often is fruitless because those patients don't keep their appointments for us to talk to them. But we have met twice with Walgreens and with our data people uh, to talk about the process, so we're actually creating um, sort of a screening tool that's going to go with the patient to give to the provider so the nurse who triages the patient is going to um, be able to check off some information quickly around whether or not they meet the, the, the high important stuff like that they're HIV positive and older than 18 and currently on ARTs or planning to start and have been seen at least twice and then the provider will then have a look, a checklist of things they can check off, and at the bottom, they can then say the recruitment results that the patient did not meet uh, participation criteria, or they met criteria but don't want to participate, and, and they did meet criteria and they want to participate, or they will mark not discuss with patients. Um, because this is an academic center, a lot of times the med students, the residents, the fellows can't keep track of everything. So we thought this might be a better tool, and we're going to try it with the patient being given the, the sheet by the nurse with the instructions they hand it to the provider when they enter the room. So we're hoping we have a, a, a cleaner way of streamlining this information and getting patients referred quickly. So I can really answer your your question, but I'm giving you what we're going to try to increase in, increase our recruitment. Okay. Um, and did you have did you have any patients this week that were not able to be screened, other than that they didn't show up or they weren't referred? I actually have four referrals for this week, so the people we did okay. talk to wanted to participate. So, but the most common reason is they don't get their meds at Walgreens. And with one provider who sees a Spanish-speaking client, he prefers they go to another HIV specialty clinic that has Spanish-speaking staff. So, 
That is uh, something uh, I can't overcome. Yeah, a Spanish-speaking pharmacist. Is it, is it a pharmacist or a tech? It's a tax that's Spanish speaking. Ah, uh, oh, okay. Okay, got it. Got it. Um, okay. And um, so, um, how about Mazzoni? Oh, hi. Hi, this is Andrew um, from Mazzoni. Um, so, uh, we did, we had someone, I guess would say um, it was earlier this week, who um, we did try to enroll. Um, he does get his. Um, how, what is his age? He was, I would say, uh, about 40-year-old um, white male. He does get his. He does use Walgreens for his for his meds. Um, not this Walgreens specifically. Um, and initially, he did say yes for for the recruitment. However, um, he did back out, and his reasoning. Sire, will tell you a little more about. Um, his reasons. Well, he, he didn't want to come here, basically, to do the NTM. Uh, but now that I know that I can do it over the phone, that that wasn't an option before, I might reach out to him again. However, for him to do an MTN over the phone, it's going to be kind of difficult because he has um, uh, a language barrier. Like, not a language barrier. He has, speech. He has um, um, difficulty with speech. Yeah, difficulty with speech. He, he, he stumbled, right? Yeah, he has a stutter. He has yeah, a stutter. He's stutter. So I, I think it's going to be difficult for me to do that on on the phone. But we were just discussing about it while you guys were uh, talking on the phone. We're going to try to get him back. Um, yeah, because he doesn't fill his medicines here, but um, he still uses Walgreens. Right. And yeah. any other so that's, that's, any, our, that's our patient. Great. Are there any other patients that were referred this week that that could not be referred this week? Uh well the the um yeah, he referred me three pay let me see, one, two okay, hold on. Actually had fairly good luck this yeah. week. Yeah, this week we're moving. Um awesome. he yeah, he gave me three patients this week. And I have one for tomorrow. One that hasn't answered the phone, and then one that uh, we, the hep C patients that we discussed before that we were having trouble with, we finally got her come in, and I'm going to try to do her some Monday. So, and we just got a new one now. So, we, I have a total of four this week. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So when we distribute our our sheets next week, we'll have we'll have good results there. Yep. Yeah, we'll, yeah, I think we'll we'll be okay. I mean, I'm, uh -huh. while you guys were on the phone with Andrea and I, we were discussing a few new strategies that we're going to try to implement, change, uh, to make it faster. And I think it's going to work, yeah. Awesome. That's, that's fantastic. Um, I, I did want to give, um, I know that Beth Israel is usually in, next in our line. Um, to um, discuss, um, uh, Beth Israel's uh, project is currently on hold um, pending um, 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 a review by their IRB um, again. So we will we will be back with uh, Beth Israel um, shortly um, in the process. Um, is anybody from Beth Israel on the line today? Yes, hi, it's Sandra Middleton. How are you? Hi, Sandra. How are you? I'm good. Thank I'm good. Thank you for joining I, us. And thank you for having me. I, I mean, I was I I do have some information because we did start recruiting prior to our hold. Oh, um, please. and the only the only uh, situation that we encountered here is that many of our patients in our outpatient setting going to the clinic for a very long time, and there are a couple of local pharmacies where they have a relationship with the pharmacist. So we did have a couple of people turn us down just because they've literally been using the same pharmacy for many, many years, and they want to stick with the pharmacist that they know. So mm -hmm. that we, we did have that instance in a few times, so Great. we're working on okay. it. <laughs> That's, that that's very good. And I hear this reoccurring theme um, amongst all the projects that um, 
that your challenge is not necessarily identifying the patient, but convincing them to utilize um, Walgreens um, pharmacy as their, their primary pharmacy during this project. Would you all kind of agree with that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. If everybody, yeah. If, mm -hmm. yeah. If everybody I talked to enrolled, I'd have 100. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have uh, talked oh, yeah, we to, would have, have we talked to 100 people. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and um, yeah, Howard yeah. Brown? Yeah. Hi, this is Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, so Diane is actually down in our clinic right now consenting someone. So I'm going to just yeah. uh, give a little. Yeah, right? Um, so she actually, uh, at the beginning of the call, was also in the clinic consenting someone. Um, and the individual said that they didn't want to participate in the program because they already have a really good relationship with Drew, who's our pharmacist here at our Sheridan Road Clinic. Um, and I think that this is something that we've seen a couple of times, is that the patients already have such a good relationship with Drew and have been utilizing the Walgreens Pharmacy that we have here in our site. Um, and it's hard for us to get them to see the value of the program since they're already working with our pharmacists so well. Um, so that's something that we've experienced a few times in our recruitment. Um, Diane is still um, giving them the consenting information in her card and letting them know if they want to reach out and change their mind, they can absolutely enroll in the program. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, these and had, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I was going to say, are these patients that um, you are identifying that have that relationship with the pharmacist, um, are, are, they, are they patients that really kind of, um, that fit the profile as, as not being virally suppressed or, yeah. oh, wow. So what we do, um, every day I run a report out of our um, electronic medical record for patients coming in the following day um, in both of our sites that have a viral load over, that their last um, lab draws had a viral load over 200. Um, so then we send that report out to our um, patient-centered medical home care teams every evening for the next day's clinic, and that's who we have been uh, prioritizing in the recruitment effort. So this is Ambrose. Um, maybe a thought uh, for these patients might be that, um, we can explain that even though they, they have a great relationship with Drew and, and we know Drew does a great job, um, by taking part in this project, it actually will help Drew have more information about the patient to make better um, decisions and help improve the patient in maybe a different way than he's been able to do in the past. Sure. Yeah, and I think Diane is, you know, definitely giving them that information is encouraging them to, you know, take it home look at the information, um, and then, you know, we can see if we can maybe do some follow-up with them as well, you know, like a week later to see if they have read it over it and have any questions for us. But, yeah, I, that'd be I, great. I can, I can totally see that being uh, why patients would say that with your site, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Drew's been with us for so long that I feel like, you know, both Drew and Brittany, that our patients, I mean, it's a pretty intimate setting, so, um, and it being right here in our clinic, you know, they come out from their appointment with their providers and go directly over uh, and talk to Drew and Brittany. So, I mean, it's a good problem to have, but it's a trend that we are definitely seeing. Yes. Um, I'm wondering if it might be helpful um, if Drew and Brittany, the pharmacist in this case, um, encourage that client to enroll. Okay. Okay, so yeah, we Kristen, could um, definitely do that. Sorry, this is I'm Kristen. Sorry. I think in addition, like, as Drew and Brittany are talking to them or or Diane or somebody else, in addition to reinforcing that the pharmacist might have additional information on them, they could also take the, the approach of, um, since they already have this great relationship, it really shouldn't require too much additional time on their part, but it will help as a greater whole to provide information to support that relationship for other patients as well. Okay. So the greater good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know. I I, I, I didn't know if that ha that, that uh, process has been tried or discussed. Um, ha has has that happened by chance that Drew or Brittany kind of reversed? <laughs> Reverse enroll them, I'll call it. 
Yeah, I don't know if it has. I mean, I think it's definitely something that we would be willing to explore with friend Brittany. I mean, it's not, you know, an overwhelming number of people. So in these one-offs, I think that Diane and I can coordinate with Drew and Brittany to see if what additional um, reaching out we could be doing. Okay, great, great. Um, thank you. Um, Desert Aid? Okay. Um, Anyone, um, I, I, do I have my folks from Unity on today? Okay. I don't have uh, an update for you, but Shanice is here. Oh, terrific, Shanice, thank you. Sure. Um, I appreciate that. Um, um, Unity just started um, their recruitment um, this week, um, in ha last week actually, and have one patient that they have referred and have completed the process um, with that patient. Um, so they, they are well underway um, in the process. Um, any other um, initial comments that folks have about recruitment? This is, this is Terry from Albany. Um, I was just thinking the same, I think something you were talking about a minute ago about whether we can kind of reverse recruit a little bit, whether the pharmacist can identify patients that they're, you know, that they're serving in the pharmacy, but that are not, that they know are not a part of the program, um, and maybe mention it to them, especially, <clears throat> I mean, I'm thinking like, there may be things going on with the patients that would make them suitable for the program that we might not necessarily know about, especially if we're not doing their primary care. Um, we may not know about changes that are being made in their diabetes medicine or changes that are being made in their cholesterol medicine um, or something like that. Um, and if the pharmacist could say, you know, you're already coming here, we'd love for you to participate, and then they can just send them over to talk to me. They don't have to, you know, do the whole, whole spiel. That might help us get some folks as well. Absolutely, I think that, that that's a, a great suggestion. Um, and um, if, um, I know that there has been dis some discussion from the project team um, about um, having something formal um, happen like that, um, and that's still being explored. But, um, but, but definitely, um, I think that it is, uh, as part of the, the local team, um, the Walgreens and the, the, the clinic, um, having them work together on identifying those, those clients could be very helpful. Well, and I wonder too, you know, I mean, we made up these flyers and little, little posters and stuff, but we didn't, put, we didn't think to put any of them over at the Walgreens, you know, and maybe we ought to at least put the little flyers over at the Walgreens so that when the folks are in there getting their medicines, they could see that sounds it. sounds like a great idea. If they haven't already been told about it. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a great idea. Absolutely. Michael, Linda has a question in Broward. Yes. All right. Um, I had two clients. Um, they, they were referred to me from another doctor. It's not care resource, but we have a nice working relationship in which I actually want to sign them up because they do come here for Walgreens. And what I did was I got um, a release of medical information so that I can work directly with the doctor so that the pharmacist also has access. Is that okay? Can I do that or, or no? Um. <laughs> it's a big question, but I'm just saying, I, I can get clients. I can get a lot of clients from these doctors, and they're willing to work with us, but I need to know, is it okay? Yeah. Uh, um, so um, that's something I think we need to discuss um, in a little more detail. Um, the, the, the project was um, really designed to get um, clients that are being seen at your clinic. They're um, seen only here through case management and mental health. Right. 
uh, right, and rece receiving their medical care there. But yeah. um, this is a question that we will um, we'll take back to the project team and explore and get back with you. Okay. Thank you. But then, thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. That. Um, okay. Um, any other questions initially? No. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, some folks had been inquiring um, with me about the um, the uh, reimbursement process um, for the program, and I will. Um, I just wanted to kind of review that with you. Um, just reminding folks that this contract is a performance-based um, billing contract. Um, so uh, with that goal of reaching recruitment by May 29th, um, individuals will receive um, $120, $125 per um, form submitted um, in the process. So the initial, the initial funding uh, for the program was to uh, was for training and for recruitment of the target um, the targeted goal goal number um, of the clinic. Um, so that that's kind of where we are at this point um, with with that system. Um, and so as soon as we we get enrollment really started. Um, and moving along quite nicely, then um, reimbursement um, will will start coming back um, to the site. Um, additional reimbursement. Um, how the the sites, how we do the quality monitoring of that, um, is that we use um, your progress monitoring Excel sheets that you sent you send to us on a weekly basis as a way to validate your submissions of your forms. Um, we then, after we validate them, we will return that document um, to you um, indicating um, the number of forms that were accepted, um, and that documentation will be the documentation that will be used um, for the invoicing process and for billing us uh, for the program. Does that does is that help clarify some things for folks? Yes. Okay. And we're we're happy to have discussions with uh, with groups offline um, as well uh, regarding the the process. Um, I also just wanted to remind people about the abstract and publication uh, process um, that all um, abstracts and publications that are produced. Um, has to be reviewed by the project team leadership, and it must go through clearance um, at CDC um, prior um, to submission um, of that abstract. So, it, and typically that takes um, some time for that to happen, and we're requesting folks give at least six weeks notice um, prior to an abstract deadline um, so that we can get that process um, in place and your abstract reviewed and cleared uh, prior to the deadline. With that being said, um, Kristen, um, part of our project team, um, did submit an abstract um, to uh, the International Conference on HIV Treatment and Prevention Adherence, IAPAC, um, and that conference is uh, occurring on June 29th. Um, in Miami, Florida, I believe, and wow. I have presented the title of the abstract there for you as implement, Implementation of a Patient-Centered HIV Care Model to Optimize HIV Outcomes Through Improved Communications Between Pharmacists and Providers. Um, this also, um, this also kind of piggybacks on our, our, my next topic, um, I had distributed um, Excel sheets to individual, uh, individual site leads um, asking for updated contact information for anybody at your site who is working um, on this program for their contact information um, uh, to be provided to us. And this is a way for us to stay current um, with our reporting. Um, 
to um, both IRB and um, to CDC. And as part of that process, we did denote, we did note that um, we were requesting that two individuals at each site be identified as um, authors um, on abstracts. Um, we want to be able to have the individuals who are really uh, working on the programs that are collecting uh, the data and, and really driving this program to be included in that. Um, as we move through the project, um, we will be, as we submit um, uh, manuscripts for publications um, and, and abstracts, we want to be able to acknowledge um, these key individuals um, in, in that process um, and also to include them in the development of material um, and publications and outreach as we move forward. So please do um, get those back to me if you've not already. Um, we do have uh, a deadline uh, that was set on that for this upcoming Friday, um, so please uh, make sure those are returned. Um, additionally, we did ask for um, a, the um, a project uh, clinical site characteristics form uh, to be updated utilizing your 2014 data um, and submitting to that, that to us. Um, and that is a, is a way that we can use as um, describing the clinics um, that we are, are working with in the program and what your infrastructure looks like um, as clinical uh, sites. Um, the Walgreens uh, pharmacies, um, that is being coordinated uh, through Ambrose, uh, the documentation regarding uh, the pharmacies that we um, are requiring um, as well. Um, and I, I also did want to um, alert individuals that, um, well, two things. First of all, um, Health HIV um, has just launched our new website. Um, and as part of that website, um, we are going to be launching um, next week um, the MTM um, portal <laughs> access which will have a variety of content um, available to you, including the flyers from the various um, sites, um, notes um, and, and best practices, frequently asked questions, um, ways that you can download clean copies of your um, forms um, for submission. Um, so these will all be available um, on that site, and you will be receiving information about how to access that site um, as well. Um, I do apologize. I know in our last call we talked about this site uh, coming, um, being created and developed. Um, we've had some delays with the launch of the overall program, but now we're ready to, um, to move forward with launching this section of, of the service for you um, so there can be a greater communication. Um, between the sites and um, also between the project team. Are there any other pieces of information that anybody wants to share or that I, I missed from our project team? Nope. Okay. Um, well, I'd like to thank all of you for participating today and I, I do apologize for the um, difficulties we had logging in, we will make sure that that does not happen in the future, knock on wood. Um, so I do uh, really appreciate everyone um, being part of today's call. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Michael, see you tomorrow. Uh, see you tomorrow. I'll call you in a little bit. Bye. 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 Patrick.